All right. So moving to shared solutions. So taking a step back um, uh, or step forward, um, continuing on the base that now we have uh, these activities planned and, and it's okay to build similar grant plans and things as you would do for the uh, for a bigger budget. The key is how do you design the financial sustainability. So the budgeting logic uh, doesn't make sense. There is nobody who can predict the future and it doesn't matter how much Excel and number you, numbers you use, the future will be unknown always. <clears throat> So the only way to navigate the future, unknown future, uh, specifically the more unknown it is, is to design a model how you actually navigate that correctly. So having the base uh, logic for designing for sustainability in place, and now assuming we have the base level in, in place, we can then look at some of the application uh, concepts where there is additional benefits um, and existing models uh, to, to use. So first we have to look at different things that can be made shareable uh, between similar support functions and ecosystems. So uh, we already discussed how to make the funding uh, shareable. So reallocation of existing budgets. So something that is already meant to be used for operational things reallocating small parts of that, but for multiple actors, and then using that to create new value and benefits, at least for the same value that it reduces the cost of those operations. Ownership, so the ownership can be shared to increase mutual commitment, responsibilities need to specifically define. So this is specifically for uh, like things that can be easily shared digital content, data, applications. Uh, so wherever, if I have software, one copy of that, uh, it doesn't cost anything more if, if there's 10 or 100 copies of that software. Uh, but of course, operating those have costs, but the software itself doesn't. So any, anywhere where ownership can be shared, whether it's software, whether it's content, whether it's knowledge, uh, under Creative Commons, tools, presentations, um, uh, other assets that are, you know, unused. So circle like economy thinking there. So if I have a drill, but I use it like three times a year to drill a hole, what point does it make for me to have a drill and not have a shared drill between everyone who needs a drill? <clears throat> but the responsibilities need to be specifically defined when there's ownership. Uh, operations level, so services can be shared. So if there is already a service, but you are targeting it to a certain audience, can that be broadened and serve more customers with the same existing resources? Um, or if not the whole service, can it be extended? Like if we are doing, you know, in-person webinar, uh, in-person workshops, can we just open it openly and make that uh, a workshop that is open to internet and can be recorded and those recordings could be shared. Um, functions need to be targeted to whom, where and how, so, so, uh, so that they are clear by definition, so then when they are, they can be looked well. Okay, if this is a target, could it also include this and this because these are similar? And then uh, th there would be a need uh, or a use to, to uh, use that service somewhere else in a different way. Applications, so software, those are dedicated uh, need time to service function, but can be shared use or shared software. Uh, but data is separate. So it's not meaning that data and applications go hand in hand. They can be separately considered. Uh, so a software can be used for many different functions, even if it's designed for a certain function, but there can be similar function where someone would recreate a software 
where existing software was already ex uh, existing. And this goes specifically when it's more custom, so not something like a, a generic tool uh, that is already SaaS business elsewhere, but if there is a ecosystem specific tools, ecosystem function specific tools being created, and specifically if it's done with public funding, it should be made more uh, freely available for others to use. Because holding on to those IPs benefit no one. At least it should be done by those who belong to the same tax system. So, so um, if it's built by public money, it should be public good between the, that public that pays the taxes. So that's where uh, the open uh, data models can come from. But the same should apply also to software. Doesn't mean, mean that someone should maintain that software or someone should maintain it for others. That's a separate question. Just the software itself. Say, okay, we have a software, yeah, you can have that software. If you can make it work or if there's useful pieces, but what operator can do there is to really dedicate it to start building inventory of these things, uh, maybe support the product, uh, productizing those into more meaningful ways so that those applications can be first known that they even exist, uh, or to understand where, what they can be used for. And if there are multiple actors who say, yeah, we would use that as well, then reorganize it in such a way that maybe the operator takes care of running it and all of the organizations can just use it and contribute ideas how they would like to improve it instead of operating that software themselves just for themselves. <clears throat> uh, dedicated data, so database primarily located location or data infrastructure need use and responsibility. Again, data can be copied, shared, reused, reshaped uh, with zero cost to copy, zero cost to share, uh, reused, zero cost. What costs is, is to make that happen in a more uh, productized way so that there's considerations who can use it, where it can be used, how often it can be used, for what purpose, is it free, is it paid, how reliable it is, and so forth. But the asset itself, uh, replicating and sharing, doesn't cost anything. So multiple types with access and ownership considerations. So these are all the types of things that, uh, that there's, there's a lot of things that the ecosystem operator can find value to contribute for the, uh, to, to, to reduce the costs for the source that reallocated some of their existing funding uh, to the operation or operator activities. And the server side, shared resource use, uh, typically cloud, dedicated allocation, own reserve capacity, defined, maintain responsibilities. So specifically, the, the, we think about servers, uh, clouds, we can use Amazon or whatever, uh, it's getting more and more cost effective. So the hardware and the, the, the digital side that is being used is not really the cost factor. It's more of the, those uh, server admin resources that maintain the software and maintain that it's running securely, that it's running uh, as planned and so forth. But typically uh, there's a lot that a, let, let's say a good combination of two server admins doesn't need to have many, two server admins can, uh, in the modern architectures, uh, support significant amount of softwares and infrastructure compared to past. But it's very difficult uh, for run your own setup without having a dedicated uh, system admin, someone who looks after your software. So typically that is a place where there can be relatively high cost for relatively low use of that resource where instead having a combination of shared uh, expertise uh, on the ecosystem operator side multiple different applications can be run and the cost can be uh, driven down by reallocating of, of uh, starting from reallocating the time use of those server 
So um, this is really to look at from the perspective of what types of things and in what level things can be shared. And uh, then looking at some use cases, <coughs> removing inefficiencies at ecosystem level. So um, this is, there's a time, this was from June this, this year, Startup Digest Helsinki. So many places in the world have the Startup Digest that comes from Silicon Valley and there's like curate, curators locally uh, trying to aggregate events uh, in event information from multiple sources and curate that into newsletter format and, uh, and feeds. So it's a manual effort. Um, this is an example of what is happening there. Like that doesn't make any sense. Uh, this is directly from just a random we uh, picked. Uh, all of those things happening. So probably someone has figured that Tuesday afternoons is a very good time to organize an event either from an organizer's perspective, or it's a good day to have a good uh, audience. But when more people find out the same, uh, which is the outcome is this now, these are actually all events uh, targeted for the same audience. Uh, so the, 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 the user experience now from the participant side is like, okay, interesting events would like to go, but which one of these should I go? So I can't go to that, all of them. So a lot of empty space during the same week to allocate. So how does that problem occur? Of course, because those who organize those events are unaware of the others organizing the events. So the, the solution for that should, uh, on the digital side is of course that the information, if it comes after the fact, because of the model, how it's collected. So it's an aggregation of already published events. Uh, but if doing that in a, in a uh, digital sense, we could get the information uh, earlier, faster, and we could put uh, in the aggregated system, we can put some smart analyzing in place that takes into account the multi-stakeholders overlapping events and starts doing informing them about when actually, how does the typical week look like, the past weeks, as well as being informed early when someone is planning events <clears throat> to see where it doesn't make sense. And at the level, not only whether there's an overlapping event or not, but at the level whether it's for the same target audience, because of course it doesn't matter if it's overlapping event, if the other event is for uh, formation phase and the other one is for scaling phase, or the other one is for, for specifically targeted for, for uh, looking for co-founders versus looking for talent to join as an employee. So uh, bringing this type of connectivity uh, from Existing systems where most of those uh, events are published anyway, Meetup system, Eventbrite, Facebook events, uh, or then having uh, own custom applications where those are posted. A simple uh, copy of, uh, for example, a, a uh, when it's saved on a database, just to submit that information into another system that can read it. And based on this, even a simple shared uh, spreadsheet can be either created or updated automatically. So the Google spreadsheets, for example, uh, include APIs on the background. So anything can be read or written into existing spreadsheets uh, through uh, application interface. So that would be a digital exercise and when we think about, uh, we know that a lot of the Startup Digest uh, effort is a voluntary effort. So it's someone, actual person doing it uh, in an organization or as an uh, just really committed uh, individual wanting to contribute for the ecosystem as ecosystem builder. And they manually repeat this process globally everywhere all the time and with varying levels of accuracy various levels of commitment, uh, these curators change, 
people come, people go, uh, new. Uh, so it's very rare actually that uh, many ecosystems have this permanently uh, taken care of. It's something that sometimes it's taken care of, sometimes it's not, it's not really reliable. But regardless, it's a person doing it all the time, manually collecting from different sources and put, putting it manually into another system. Instead of putting a system in place that would take away that manual effort and that manual effort could be that time could be reallocated to other things. Ecosystem portals. So uh, ecosystem portal softwares, you can see that is something that every ecosystem pretty much should have. Um, and uh, in some sort, it should not be a separate silo, a database that gets updated manually and then read from that database. It should be uh, a dynamic portal that is built on top of shared data sharing infrastructure to showcase the data from the ecosystem. But this front-end application is of course something that uh, could be made open source uh, and organized as an open source development and, uh, and then among the operators. And we are happy to do that when the operators are there to contribute for that, to share our existing designs and softwares um, and one more model, uh, the distribution of knowledge. So a combination of growth academy, so innovation entrepreneurship curriculum combined with Circle Pass, the ecosystem level user account. Um, so that divides the knowledge into different modules. Uh, so we have the overall module for general knowledge for everyone. We have the module B for startup advisory and ecosystem training. And then we have specific knowledge for different development phases of a startup. So based on that, uh, we have of course the e-learning content. And it doesn't matter whether it's us or someone else doing the same. The whole curriculum is open sourced by us. Uh, so it's a it's an open standard that anyone can take, use, recreate the e-learning experience on different applications or different systems. But the key is that it can be made and or it can be licensed from the existing format as a 24-7, 365 e-learning knowledge. But with that, uh, it can be then tracked with circle paths so it can be connected to an ecosystem level user account and uh, and see what knowledge is being consumed by whom where how often and and so forth so really seeing what is the level of people wanting to become entrepreneurs in the founding formation phase or how many are consuming in what development phases and so forth so really um, collecting that information from knowledge and then being able to uh, inform also the existing support organizations uh, of specific uh, uh, talent or specific uh, knowledge being consumed and better target the services for those individuals. And again, key here, uh, is to understand that uh, it doesn't require much from the organizations itself. The technologies here are not complicated. Uh, as long as there's resources who can start looking after this and there's allocated uh, capabilities in a form of an operator who starts to look this for the benefit of the contributing uh, organizations. And none of the data flows None of the details flow without the permission of an individual wanting to share. And there doesn't need to be knowledge at the level of one support organizations, you know, support person or mentor knowing exactly who person, like a name, Bob from this old company actually consumed data. It's not at that level. Uh, the knowledge about the event can be targeted for Bob without anyone in between needing to know who is Bob. 
So those are separate questions than if someone wants to share their data based uh, or their identity based data uh, per request or not. Uh, for what reason, for what incentive. Uh, so, but if you look at any of the existing applications, uh, Mark Zuckerberg knows everyone by name and what we do, what we like, who are our friends. So this is the level that is happening now. Uh, and you take any CRM in any application, you take any event system, everyone is there with their true identity all the time, unless they put a fake name, but majority of people don't put fake names. And there is no layer of creating any type of um, uh, anonymity or a level or levels of anonymity or between between because there's no ecosystem operators who would build that. There is there's no one who looks it from that perspective. The good thing is that the regulation starts to look from that perspective, uh, GDPR and the ones that we discussed in our uh, one of our modules more about the, what the regulation thinks about how this should work. But the challenge is that uh, many of the organizations in the ecosystem, the support functions, they are either small with very limited resources to be able to cope uh, or they are spending significant amounts because they don't have knowledge of how, how else to organize that. They don't have a, their own operator who would help them. Uh, or they are part of big organization and they are running with extremely heavy uh, systems under the like government system. Uh, that is no flexibility or it's very outdated legacy systems. Um, again, because no other options really. So the combining the, the e-learning content knowledge and attaching that to a model that collects the information about uh, different behavior and activities and then create systems to in distribute that information. So possible statistics for insights, who is consuming, so uh, uh, gender, age, profile, uh, from where, so which part of the city, so from university, from this part of the city, there's more entrepreneurial people, so maybe we should take some of our offline events there, um, what modules and topics, so most likely uh, uh, if they're consuming a lot of the formation phase repeatedly, they may most likely they are most interested and relevant at their current development phase. How often? So what topics are, are, are most challenging for them because they keep repeating that uh, and so forth. And then ultimately the connection with the other services to use information to promote ecosystem services, business registration, event specific hackathon startup weekends, things to really target for that uh, audience and, uh, and, and much, much more. But these are just examples. Uh, another example, business plan tool as an online service. So the business plan as a tool, uh, very fitting when we discussed about the, the sustainable uh, finance models. Uh, so the business plan tool is relevant for uh, either those who are building the SME type of businesses, so known business models for known markets, or they are past validation, so on the scaling phase. So the business plan becomes very relevant on the scaling phase uh, for companies to, to design their financials because now they have existing revenues to actually calculate and forecast. They have the ability to forecast their sustainable uh, reoccurring revenues and so forth and most importantly to communicate all of this key information to help scale their organization. But as a tool, an, an, an online uh, application in a business plan will help to bring uh, possible statistics and insights of multi, very many perspectives because it includes the financial planning, the financial uh, facts, 
um, and also the uh, many other factors. So basically, the whole essence of a company. Not only the, the information as how you think the individual business plan as such, but aggregated view of data from multiple different business plans. So examples like total number of users planning sessions, total durations of time spent in creating plans, time spent in specific segments, topics, number of iterations per segment. So what are the key areas they keep re reiterating more? what are less, and so forth and so forth. On the organizational structure side, and you can have products, profitability, funding, average funding needs, plant entity types, number of founders, uh, foundership allocations between founders, locations of users, and, uh, and of course, some of this information can, can be considered like that's very valuable information, that's very private information. But then you have to think that all of these applications already exist and some people have no limitations to access this information that users are uh, putting in there now. So they could, uh, the system admins, those who have access to software, they can just go there and see. There's always someone who has full access to this, but it's just not something that people think about. And this is exactly the things that need to be thought about. They need to be built in a way and uh, operated in a way where people have no problem of exposing all of these things uh, so that more people see what's possible and what is uh, as long as they can trust how it's taken care of. But how can that trust exist if none of the software is operated locally are not operated locally? So, um, but this gives an idea of the type of information and it gives also the information of uh, why those organizations that have digital DNA, those who operate digitally, what type of unfair advantages they have uh, because of the access of the type of information they can, they can use. Ecosystem mapping, another simple application example having a simple tool to do ecosystem mapping in a more dynamic way, uh, in a very simple way, add a new service, design, put it in a canvas, uh, give a name, uh, where, it's, where the service starts from, like an ecosystem level relevancy, where it ends for, uh, and then by clicking that open, you can get more details of what that service actually holds when it's run, and so forth but really an ecosystem mapping app for more for those who look from that perspective, but it can also be shared. The data uh, in there can be shared in many different ways in different interfaces and so forth. So the same for, for business vertical ecosystem, having uh, a portal view, what's happening in an agri-tech. Um, and if the ecosystem infrastructure is properly planned, then the, the, it's the same data like startups in a geographical ecosystem, but because they are agri-tech startups, they are also part of the vertical from Brazil at national level, even if they are in the local ecosystem in a, in, in a city, in a, in, a, in, a, um, in a different portal, because these are only windows to that data infrastructure and the data that exists uh, in a shareable format. But and, uh, and in the same perspective that uh, a lot of similar software can be created and collaboratively developed and shared across different verticals. Just need to change visual, visuals, graphics, you know, uh, domains and so forth. But the information, what is interesting is uh, very much the same. Without, with uh, some exceptions to what is more specific to the industry. Ecosystem dashboard. So looking from the, the KPIs perspective, so a shared dashboard, depending on what type of information is relevant to whom, but designing a modular uh, experience where different types of metrics can be viewed in a commonly understandable way or visualized in, the, in such way. 
uh, and not only the applications themselves can be reusable, individual user interface components and pieces can be made uh, uh, shareable uh, as well. And that's something that is happening uh, a lot, uh, for example, in React.js. Uh, it's all about recycling and making uh, components universally reusable. Uh, and the big organizations like Google and Facebook are big in this. They are big contributors, so that's great. Uh, so you can see material, user interface, open source, uh, React, um, and, and so forth. And you can find a library of existing components to use. But access to those is not there in the level of ecosystem efficiency because typically it's by a software company that uh, basically takes free components, builds a user interface and sells that as a uh, maintained software. And, uh, and, and, but this type of capabilities don't exist um, just because they have not been designed to, to build this type of resources for, for ecosystem level. Some examples of the ecosystem dashboard items, we have ecosystem size uh, and um, the top ones, number, number of people per role, number of companies, number of support organizations, the top ones like top five, top, top 10 startups with these criteria top support organizations based on these KPIs um, and so forth. Budgets, total support budgets, average budget per support service, average budget per supported company, like when really putting those shared KPIs into use, <clears throat> there can be more accuracy uh, to how to reallocate uh, the, the resources. And of course, Everything here, everything that we cover are just individual pieces to look at where do we start, how do we do step by step. So it's not to say that everything needs to be done and that's the wrong approach, that's the you know, design to fail approach, but it should be started step by step. So if we look at shared KPIs, well, the logical shared KPIs is the contributing organization and the beginning uh, foundational establishing of ecosystem operation activities. We allocate money and resources. You and we measure what value we, do we get and you contribute value, you measure what value you contribute back. That's a shared KPI. That's the first item in your KPI dashboard, if nothing else. Uh, and the point is to show a, a vast variety of inventory of topics and ideas, how to consider where to then find actual like real pieces into that uh, reallocation of resources and then utilizing that uh, shared approach uh, to support. Ecosystem results, so these are the, the, the kind of aggregated measures of multiple different act actors. More items, examples like people, what are the most active, who are the most active networkers, or high service use, who are the ones who uh, accumulate a lot of knowledge, who are the latest people who have joined the ecosystem, whether they are new talent, uh, local, or whether they are foreign, uh, who are the most followed people, and of course, all of again apply people decide what is the visibility of their data and profiles. But we know, of course, all of this exists. You don't have to look further than Instagram, where people just want to make sure they are very visible, very followed. But again, taking that concept and context into the uh, business-oriented world and with what actually makes sense. Team, team structures, average founder team size, founder age, Total team size, growth, team quality, momentum, low momentum, are they stuck somewhere? Companies, of course, different rankings. But the point here is that not only looking at the traditional ones, because they don't really apply around innovation and 
Kelvin's time. So really like measures that are progress-based, measures that are based on what makes sense. And we covered a lot of these KPIs in the earlier modules, but this is then looking at those outcomes of those KPIs in an aggregated way.